Hi there. Welcome to the Universe City of Street Dance. I'm Sol. I'm Ache. This is the first edition of A Course in Physics. We broke it down into five sections, and we broke those sections down into parts. We're going to explain each part to you, first by defining its functions, and then explaining why it makes partner dancing work. We're going to show it to you and also example it by using one or more of our favorite dances. This is going to be a video glossary, definitions and examples. So get ready to nerd out with us. Course in Physics. Why partner dancing works. Turning back to a low tension state. It's fun when you change things. Section one, frame. Now frame is best defined as the amount of muscle it takes to, to keep your bones in a particular shape. Why is this important to partner dancing? Why does this help partner dancing work? Well, it's a reference point. All right, so to de better define this, we're gonna talk about it in, in how it's used. It's, it's used with degrees of tension. So a low tension, right, a low tension, this is the relaxed place. This is the place you start a dance, and this is the place that you return to often within the dance. It's not all smoke and mirrors and, and lots of arm movements. and It's not all of that. It's a lot of low tension. It's a lot of just being there with somebody. But we do want to go to high tension for many, many reasons. And we're going to show you that right now with a few examples to bachat the music. And we got a Zook example for you too. Low tension. Nice and comfortable. We're going to return to this place after we do something really fun. High tension. Asking for something more from our partner. Back to low tension. Yeah, here we go. So low tension, high tension, something incredible happens. Back to low tension. This is an example of when the frame's gonna change or be broken, as we refer to in partner dance lingua. So for that to happen to my partner, my partner's going to feel my partner's going to feel their palm going from a normal state. So the palm is normally faced inward, okay? Very rarely is it faced up. But it's definitely never faced out like that. So if your partner changes the direction that your palm is facing, Often it's going to cause your elbow to straighten and then what we're going to do some of the time is we're going to put your hand behind your back which we like to call a hammer lock. So here's the situation in which you're going to break the frame. Let's show you it. Low tension. We're just here. This is our, this is our baseline. Yeah? But I'm going to ask for something more. I'm going to ask for a little more quick rhythm here so I went into a high tension. But you know what? Go back to low tension. Let's break the tension. Let's break the frame. Sorry. Bah! Frame broken and frame returning back to a low tension state. It's fun when you change things. So when talking about frame, there's a certain rule that needs to be discussed here. And it's the rule that states that a follow should not pass, their, a follow's elbows should not pass their mid-axillary line. Okay, right here is the mid-axillary line. And for the follow to pass, for their elbows to follow the mid-axillary line, it sort of breaks the reception. So for a follow to have good reception to receive information well, the frame maintains this elbow in front anterior to the mid-axillary line. Now when we're talking about the leader's frame, it's also important that their elbow stays anterior to the mid-axillary line because it helps broadcast a good signal. However, it is common for the lead to break this line. Here's an example of when it's okay to break the mid-axillary line. Bah. Now in the sugar push in West Coast Swing, it's common for the lead to break the mid-axillary line. It doesn't in interfere with the broadcasting of the signal. All right, so as you can see, Frame is very important to maintain throughout the dance, and it is also a very broad subject. So if we can always remember that frame is within our peripheral vision, 
We can always keep good connection to our partners and have this be a tool of good communication. Go and pop, step and kick, step, kick, 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 step and. Section two, posture and pressure connectivity. The first part of this section, we're gonna talk about compression connectivity, creating this A shape. Let's give them a dramatic A shape. Here's our dramatic A shape, right? This is also talked about in the form of uh, uh, the posture here would be sports stance. So sports, okay, for a sports stance, for like baseball or tennis, here we are. We have our weight in the balls of our feet, our knees are bent, and we're forward. This is common in the Latin dances, salsa, bachata, cha-cha, other Latin dances, but it is an extreme form in swing. So we're gonna give you a Charleston example. All right, we're gonna use Charleston from the Lindy Hop to explain how posture, pressure connectivity is used in the sports stance. We'll show you why that works. We're gonna start our pulse here. Yeah, we're gonna go right into Charleston. Check out our sports stance. Five, six, here we go, and pop. Step and kick, step, kick, 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 step and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why is compression connectivity important to making partner dancing work? Because you can get a nice strong connection for a rhythmic dance like bachata. See how close together we are in the rhythm? This is because of compression connectivity. Notice our A shape and the compression. Compression connectivity is really valuable when you're doing a dance that has a strong rhythmic nature to it. You saw the A shape, now here's the V shape. If we have that compression, now we're gonna have extension. We're gonna have elastic, we're gonna have a rubber band effect you see this shape right here? West Coast Swing loves this shape. Swing uses this shape. Uh, we even, we're gonna show you an example in Zook, but here we go with our West Coast Swing basic. One, two, three, and four. Look at my partner's anchor. Look at that anchor. See my, our awayness, this V shape? We're creating elasticity. We're creating a rubber band effect that we're gonna use there. So why does this help partner dancing work? Because you develop. You're developing stretch, you're developing energy that you're gonna then use later. Stretch, elasticity, happens in Zook right here. This is why it works, because we're developing energy that we're gonna use in a moment. So now you don't just have to be sports dance in the ball of your feet, and you don't just have to be extension in your heels, but it's also nice to have an equal distribution of weight across your feet, which is most common to dance flat-footed in kizomba. We're flat-footed because we nearly step on every beat. So we want to be more grounded, we want to be closer to the ground, and because most of the movements actually come from the hips, we just went over the three postures, A, V, and H. Now why is it that posture is so important to making sure partner dancing works? Ashe? Posture is absolutely fundamental because not only does it protect our individual body from making sure that our spinal alignment, our muscles, bones, ligaments, and other structures in our body stay um, aligned and protected, but it really gives a clear and concise point of connection with our partner. Okay, section three, other methods of connectivity we didn't previously go over in section two. So we're talking about shape retention, or in other words, keeping our frame. So while we maintain the shape, this creates opportunities for resistance, right? Which allows good conductivity for information between partners. For example, in West Coast Swing, bringing my partner in for a tuck turn, I'm dependent on their frame maintaining the shape 
for this redirect. Not often talked about, but very important, is a type of connection, a method of connectivity, that we like to refer to as wireless fidelity. Also known as Wi-Fi. Here's a really good example. Basically a law of nature, universally used throughout all partner dancing, is a concept of creating a space and then allowing your partner to fill it. This is a ladder all within Brazilian Zouk. Notice how we're not touching. It's not necessary to touch. Again, creating a space, allowing my partner to fill it. Filling that space then. Creating one, filling it. Here's another example of why body language is so useful in partner dancing. A salsa basic step, I'm going into my partner space and I'm offering them a cross by lead. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my chest to point the direction that I would like them to go. So much can be communicated through body language. Wireless fidelity is so important to partner dance. We're going to show you another example of it. Now often when you're dancing with your partner, it's nice to let them go and do their own thing. And then you are going to style and they're going to style back at you. We went over the modes of connectivity. And we also talked about pressure. But let's talk about pressure within the connectivity and why it's important to have a very low base line of connectivity. Now, where are you going to use that very low pressure the most? You're going to use it when you're adjusting the frame. For example, notice how the low level of pressure enables us to be more complex in our movements. Very low. I'm barely touching my partner here. We're allowed to do intricate movements. Right here, the pressure is going to increase and we're going to develop it. We're moving up to the weight of the arms, the next level of pressure. All I need is the weight of my partner's arm here in order to maintain this as connection, as in the starter step. So here we are in Zook again. The next level of pressure is body weight. When am I going to use body weight? I roll my partner in right here. I'm going to catch my partner's body. This is a higher level of pressure than friction or the weight of the arm. Now we're going to increase the pressure even more to the maximum amount, which we call counterbalance. This is the maximum amount of pressure that you're going to have. I'm going to offer a hammer lock. My partner feels safe because of the barrel of monkeys. Section four, the laws. All right, so we start with Newton's law of following, which can be defined as a follow in motion stays in motion until acted on by an outside lead. What that means is if your lead offers you a direction, continue to travel in that direction until the lead offers you a different direction. If your lead offers you a rotation, maintain that rotation in that same direction till acted on by an outside lead. We're gonna use West Coast Swing to describe this the best. Your lead's gonna offer you a direction, you're gonna maintain that direction until the lead changes something. Also, your speed is important. If your lead offers you a certain amount of speed, you maintain that speed unless it's changed. The law of placement follows. Leave your hand the last place that your lead puts it for at least a minimum of four beats or so. So we're going to use salsa to illustrate this. I'm going to give an arm toss to my partner on one. We have two and three before I'm going to pick up that hand. I'm going to use it on five, six, and seven. The law of connectivity. The law of connectivity dictates that the follow is going to push equal and opposite of what the leader offers. So for a visual way for you to see, I'm pushing my partner in that direction. She's pushing back in the same direction with the exact same pressure that I'm offering her. 
Same thing goes for any connection point in the body. If I have my hand on my partner's scapula, my partner is pushing away from me because I'm bringing them towards me in the exact amount of pressure that I'm giving in the exact opposite direction. Why is this valuable? Well, this is valuable so we can do intricate movements where my partner's again pushing in the opposite direction of me. Doesn't matter what direction I'm pushing in, she's pushing the opposite. And there we are. We have perfect connection because my partner followed the law of connectivity. The law of primary connection. This can be defined as the point of contact closest to the follow center is the main source of information. Other parts of contact give supporting information. So we're going to illustrate this within Zook and the Virginia. My hand on my partner's scapula is closest to their center. This is the primary connection point. This hand here, this is secondary. But if I let go of that hand, now that becomes primary. What if I touch a different part of their body? Now my hand on the shoulder here is, closest to, is closer to the center than this hand here. Barrel of monkeys and ball joint principle. This has everything to do with how the hands interlock. But notice, if you make a barrel of monkeys and you interlock the hands, there's still the ability to release, okay? Sort of a safety mechanism, but it's also very efficient and comfortable. All right, again, we're talking exclusively about the hands here. So the ball joint principle is to sh illustrate how turns are done within partner dancing and why that's possible. Here are my two fingers. I'm gonna put them inside my partner's upside down cup with their pinkies up. Notice how this turn functions. It's a ball joint function, right? This is how we get the turns to work in partner dancing. Here we are showing you an example of why the barrel of monkeys principle works for partner dancing in bachata. I'm going to offer a hammer lock. My partner feels safe because of the barrel of monkeys. Now we're going to do a pretzel. Notice the barrel of monkeys and the ball joint principle in action. Ball joint. The law of conservation of energy. This can be defined as not exerting energy when it's not necessary. For instance, if we'd like to dance all night long and maintain our stamina, we can stay relaxed and be content with where we are in partnership. It's universal. It's comfortable. It's steady. Section 5, point of communication. It's just like it sounds. From where in the body are we moving through in our dance? Point of communication. The chest in bachata. It's bold. It's powerful. Point of communication in West Coast Swing is the abdomen. It's universal. It's comfortable. It's concise. Point of communication in Zook is the hips. Okay, well thanks for joining us for this extra nerdy version of partner dancing education. Ashe, thank you so much for being a wonderful follow and being a wonderful partner. All right, thank you for getting through this horrible video. <laughs> 45 minutes of your life, bitches. Okay, so sorry. <laughs> Soul just needed to get this one out of his butt crack. So, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Follow, follow, follow us on Instagram. Be our friends on Facebook. Dance with people. Learn all the dances. Okay, no, for real though. Just stay right here. Just stay right here. I just wanted people to know the different... Uh, I just wanted people to understand why partner dancing works. Alright, so... Hopefully by now you can see that we've illustrated how partner dancing works. Why it does. And there's definitely more where this comes from. So stay tuned with us, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. 